Romans chapter 8. <coughs> Romans chapter 8. I was uh, sitting in my office yesterday morning and uh, my uncle called me, Uncle Dave. He called me. If you know Uncle Dave, he's, he's very reserved. It's kind of a surprise to me that he called me. You know, Uncle Dave. Uh, a few of you do. And I answered the phone. He said, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm studying the eighth chapter of Romans. And he said, that's probably the most powerful chapter in the Bible. That was his response. My dad loved the 8th chapter of Romans, so tonight I'm going to take you on the journey through that. Romans 8, this is NIV, verse 1. There is, therefore there is now. Everybody say now. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no guilty verdict or no punishment for those who are in Christ. You might want to know that. The power of that statement. In him, if I were going to title this, and I will for online purposes, in him, in him. That's what had been going over in my mind. Verse 2 says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life. The law of the spirit gives life. Set me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit gives life. That's hope because of what Jesus did on the cross. So now, as a child of God, you have been set free from the law of sin and death. Death, the law of sin and death. And through faith in him, we are born again. I just preached on born again, remember? Peter said this in 1 Peter 1, This is King James Version. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a, per, a pure heart fervently being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which lives and abides forever you know the word of God lives and abides forever uh You know, the word of God does not change. Do you know the word of God is, will stand through eternity? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word which lives and abides forever. So how do you know what is the evidence that you are a child of God? How do you know that you're a child of God? What's the evidence? What is the evidence? If you could point out one thing and you could tell me if you have this, you are a child of God. What would that one 
thing be. To be a child of God, you must have the love of God. Living and abiding in your life. Because God is love. John 1, 1 John 4 and 8 says, He that loves not does not know God. A lot of people say they know God. But John said, He that loves, loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God doesn't have love. God is love. I wonder about people who say they love God, but they do not want to be associated with what God's word says. People say they love God, but they don't want to be involved in the church right now. Have you ever wondered if somebody really loved you or they just said they loved you? Have you I have. I've wondered. Have you because I use that quite a bit. In fact, if you're on the phone with me, some of the times I'll say, hey, I love you. A lot of people, that, they don't know how to handle that. Some people don't say it back because they're not comfortable loving Did you know when our kids get sick, we're more apt to pray for them fervently compared to somebody else's kids? You, you ever notice that? Or if, if you're close to me, then, oh, I'm out, I'm a fat Stephen. Why? Galatians 5 and 6 says this, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision but faith works by love the closeness of relationship matters love the closeness of relationship matters and has obvious effect on us Back to Romans 8, verse 3. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, sinful nature, the flesh, the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son. That's close. In the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering and so he condemns sin in the flesh. Verse 4. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who do not live according to the flesh. It qualifies it. Who do not live according to the flesh. But according to the spirit. He is speaking of those who believe in, trust in, pattern their lives by the word of God. I thought, this is like explaining the difference between what I have to do and what I want to do. What, what I have to do and what I want to do. What I have to do is how the flesh sees the scriptures. What I have to do is how the flesh sees the scriptures and what I want to do to please the father is what happens when I walk in the spirit. Am I making any sense to you? What, what I have to do versus what I want to do. What I have to do is when I look at the scriptures and I go, oh, that's hard. But when I walk in the spirit, I go, oh, I want to do this because I want to please my father. The difference in Walking in flesh and walking in the spirit. Verse 5. 
Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. I want to attempt to give you maybe some down-to-earth examples. If I make you clean your bedroom, it's different from you wanting to clean your bedroom. If I make you go to church, it's different from you wanting to go. If you want to clean your bedroom, it makes a statement that you value the place that you have been given to rest and to keep your personal belongings. don't want to keep your bedroom clean, it means you don't really care. John, first, John 5, verse 1, New International Version, NIV, First John 5, 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands, a uh, King James Version here says, are not grievous, uh, in our says, or burdensome, or not burdensome. Uh, verse 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The commandments of the Lord are not grievous to his children. You ever told your kid they had to do something and their response was, do I have to? I don't think I ever said that. <laughs> Did your folks ever make you go to school if you didn't want to? <laughs> but now... Listen, but now you wish you would have made yourself listen because life would have been a whole lot better if you would have listened and paid more attention in class. Amen? But the flesh wanted to play ball. My flesh wanted to shoot basketball every day. My flesh. But the spirit my dad was trying to get into me was that one day you're going to need a job and I don't want you working on the railroad. I won't work on the railroad. He said, I don't want you on the railroad. I want you to go to school and I want you to get an education. Because I don't want you beating that metal with a hammer and under a welding hood. Hmm? Romans 8 and 7. NIV. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh can't please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but you're in the realm of the spirit. If, indeed, the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Jesus himself had to pray himself into submission.
Matthew 26, 39. New King James says, He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Peter, what, what could, could you not watch with me one hour? Well, what's Peter? Peter's been subdued by what? The flesh. Jesus is praying in the spirit. He still has to pray beyond how he feels. Verse 20, verse 41. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Be, be, be careful. The spirit is willing, but the flesh oh. is weak. If Jesus had to pray this, you better pay a close attention. There's some things you're going to have to pray for, through, and you're going to have to earnestly contend for it. How, that used to ask this question a lot. How do you make a man love his wife? In fact, what he would say was, you can't make a man love his wife. He would say, son, he either loves her or he doesn't. Do you know how many people I have tried to get to live for the Lord? over the last now 25 years and I have failed at trying to make people live for the Lord. I have failed at trying to convince people as a whole because you either love God or you don't. And I can't make you love him. That's right. I can paint you the picture. I can preach you the word. But you're going to have to have your own love story. That's right. Right. The truth is, people don't see the value in the love of God. Oh. Revelation 2. Look, I'm not having success because I don't preach the truth. I'm, I'm not having the success I'm looking for because of the state of the, that the church is in. I'm talking the church as we know it. Church world as we know it. Revelation 2. One, New King James says, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. Now, this is several thousand years ago now, okay? So you don't think this just happened here over the last two months, okay? Because this is several thousand years ago, and he says, to the church of Ephesus, write this. These things, says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, that you've tested those who say they're apostles and are not, you found them liars, and you have persevered, you had patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you're fallen. Repent. Change. Do the first works or else I will come to you quickly. Remove the lampstand from this place unless you repent. First love. First love. What's the one thing? Look at me here. What's the one thing you've got to have to be a child of God? You've got to have love. 
Love. You gotta have this. You have the love of God, it'll it'll change who you are. Love. Everybody say first love. He's he had first love. Amen. First love. First love. Everybody say first love. Think about first love. Say it. First love. What, what, talk, well, think, well, let's think about first love. First love. I'll give you my example. First love. When I first met Kelly, I thought about her constantly. I thought about her how often? Once a week. When I didn't have anything else to do, I thought about her constantly. He's warning them about this first love issue. He, uh, I would work all day. I would get off work and I would drive to Conway and we'd sit up till midnight or one o'clock and I'd leave, I'd drive back to Sheridan and I would get up, I'd go to work, I'd go back to Conway. I'd sit up till mid there midnight, one o'clock, I'd drive home. I'd get up and go to work. I'd go back to Conway. After about three or four days of that, I would say, I'm not coming back tomorrow night. But five o'clock would roll around. I'd go back to Conway. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about first love. Come on. And people have lost it. And he says, because you lost it, unless you change, I'm coming to you. I got my belly full of that. She and I sat down to make wedding arrangements. And she said about, what about next June? I said October 1st or forget the whole deal. <laughs> she said October 1st sounds good. Put the hard clothes on. <laughs> 8 and 10. Romans 8 and 10. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. I want to serve God. I have gotten this more over the last two weeks. When I stand before God, I want to stand there but and he will know the motives of my heart that they have not always been pure. But when I stand before him, I want him to know my motives have been in the spirit and they've been, I've been living by the word because I want to please him. Yes. Because I love him. Otherwise, I die. Fourteen, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. I, I, I looked, I looked, I looked at this a long time. And, and the best way that I know how to explain this to get my mind is around it is when I say, my Father. My Father. My. I cry, my. 
16. The, ver the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That this, is, uh, this is continuity. Continuity. Uh, and, and, and there, there's no disconnection. There's continuity. See, if you stop praying, you stop going to church, you stop listening to the word, you quit reading your body, Bible, and you disconnect from the body of Christ, and uh, you let your flesh keep you home, and your feelings are hurt, or you get sideways, and you know what happens? You lose continuity. I know, I know about that. I got hurt and I said, I don't want to, I don't want to be around church people for six months. I said that to my own self. I don't want to. And you know what happened? After two weeks, my kids started crying. Love factor. Love factor. So why does daddy not want to go to church no more? I said, get in the car. <laughs> it only took one conversation for me to hear my children say anything about me losing my continuity with the body of Christ. And I said, get in the car. We're going to go find a place. Don't you tell me you can't find a church. If you don't like this church, there's 40 other churches in this county. Come on, man. You don't like me, I get it. You get bored with me, I get it. I listen to myself and say, those are the most gracious people in the world. Keep coming back. <laughs> it's a love factor. Amen. You lose that. You lose that love. You're heading to a really dark, high place. Mm. He's going to remove your candlestick. That's how I think. Romans 8, the first verse, starts out with 17. Uh, verse 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God, co heirs of Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Now! Say now. Now. Uh, 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 Romans 8 1 said what? Said there is therefore now. Two nouns. Standing here in faith, our relationship is not one of slavery to where we have to. Our relationship is one of love as a son, as sonship. Slaves are born. What they have to do and they do it. But the son, he, by love, wants to please the father. The slave is property, but the son, he come out of the father. The son is part of the father. The slave fears the whip. The son knows if he asks, the father will forgive him. Luke 15, 17, New King James says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have run enough to eat and to spare? I'll perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. I will say, Father, I've sinned against heaven before you. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Make me one of your high servants. He arose, came to his father. When he was a, still a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, kissed him. And the son said to the father, I have sinned against heaven in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, bring out the best robes and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's eat and be merry. For my son was dead, is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. 
If you mess up, don't get down. You're not a slave. You're a son. Get up and get back to the Father's house. Hmm? I want to confess to you, I'm, I'm scared for a lot of people. I'm scared for people that don't even seem to be concerned why I'm scared. I'm not even the one doing what they're doing. Acts 17, 24. We'll jump to 28, Jared. Paul said, for in him we live and we move where? Where? For in him we live, we move, we have our being. For in him we live, we move, and we have our being. In him we live. Everything we do, we move everywhere we go. And we have our being. That's how we're known. We are sprung off of him. Everybody ever heard that saying? You chip off the old block. You ever heard that? You ever heard the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree? Identified as a child of God. You are to be, I am to be identified as a child of God. I want you to think of the weightiness of that. Because we have called ourselves, amen, the children of God. We are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made with human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he is appointed and he has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. In him, Jesus has come that we might have life and that we might have life as his son. You ever thought I wish I was born in a family like that? You ever thought, you ever thought I wish I... I wish I'd have had this. You ever thought that? Well, let me ask you another question. Do you know who you are? Yes. Do you, do you not realize the family that you're born in? For the believer in Jesus Christ, the one trust, who trusts in him, who loves like him, He's an heir of all things. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God in a person. We talk a lot, we have. I mean, most of us in here, we've, we've learned it from our childhood, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the question is that I pose to you tonight, do we have the Spirit of God living in us? Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. He testifies of Jesus Christ. He directs all men to Christ, the Holy Spirit. He empowers the believer in his walk 
of the Word who became flesh. Do you have the Spirit of God in you? That's a big question, isn't it? I got to thinking in Christ, in Him, in Him, in Christ, there is no male or female. There is no nationality. There's no black, white, yellow in Christ. There's not a Holy Spirit for women and a Holy Spirit for men. It's the same Spirit that works through all. Let's go back. Let's do this Romans 8 and 3 and do New King James. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Man was missing. Humanity was missing something. It had man had the law, but something was missing. And what was it? It was the love factor. When Jesus came, he fulfills the law and he is the love factor. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever Believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In him, Paul said, we live, we move, and we have our being. I'll close them with this. Sometimes real smart people can't get basic truths. If you're really educated, be careful. Be real careful because sometimes we have to be careful. We can get so full of ourselves. You ever tried to talk to somebody who knew it all? I don't talk to many of those people anymore. Nicodemus, the teacher of Israel, comes to Jesus at night and he's not even on the same page with Jesus. But the woman at the well after just a short conversation with Jesus, she goes back and starts telling everybody. What, what was the difference? It's a love factor. It's a love factor. Like, hopefully Nicodemus got it later. But that woman left there that day because, see, she had been seeking relationships and couldn't find the love factor to that day. I'll close with this. Philippians 3 and 8. Yet indeed I also count all things loss. I count all things, is that what it says? 
I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that is which through faith in Christ that righteousness which is from, faith, from God by faith that I may know Him that I may know Him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. If by any means I'm not attained to the resurrection from the dead. Stand please. Father, we love you tonight. I pray, Lord, as we look into your word, we see we see the power that we see the privilege oh we're so privileged we've been so privileged God thank you for this privilege yes. that we we can stand here tonight as children of God as sons not as slaves and through faith, we might be found in you. I'm reminded, Lord, as I stand here tonight of the first love, the love factor. I pray that all that would hear this would go back and revisit and find that, that first love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for being here. God bless you. I love you.